We're going to look at how we can use Scratch to draw L systems, or they're also called Lindemeyer systems. And in particular, what I would like to look at is something called the core curve. So a, a L systems is a sequence of instructions represented with symbols. And in this case, we've got three different symbols, F, the plus, and the negative sign. F will mean draw forward, the positive means turn left, negative means turn right by 90 degrees in both cases. So how do L system works? Well, we start with a sequence of character. In this case, it's just a F, and that's our first uh, step. Now, to get the next iteration, we're going to use a rule. And what is the rule here is that we're going to replace each f with f plus, f minus, f minus, f plus, f. So the first iteration, well, we're going to replace this f with this sequence that we have here. In the next iteration, we're going to need to replace each of the f's that are here with our sequence of characters here. And then to draw, we just follow the instructions. So for example, here we have F plus, so we go forward and turn left, then forward, turn right, forward, turn right, forward, turn left, forward. So that's what these instructions tell us. So what we're going to do in Scratch, we're going to try to make it so that just by inputting the rule, then asking the computer to apply that rule many times, and then do the drawing. Obviously, if we want to input all those instructions, it's going to be really long. So let's see how we can do that in Scratch. One of the things we're going to be using in Scratch is a pen that's going to help us to draw. And we have a few functions for the pen here. Pen down, which means we'll start drawing, and erase all. That's all we, start, we will start with. So, for example, when I start, I'm going to put the pen down, and then I'm going to move my sprite by a hundred steps. And let's have a look at what happens. My sprite moved a hundred steps, and he drew a line. A line was drawn in the path that I follow. If I ask the sprite to do the same again, I get another line. He continues on drawing. So right now, my little cat is quite big, so let's make it smaller. I'm going to change the size to 20, so it's very small. When I start my script, I'm going to erase all, and I want the cat to be somewhere at the left of my screen. So I'm going to make it move to that position initially. All right, move, go to this position. All right, so the move, I'm going to make it smaller at the beginning. Let's make it move 50 steps. Um, that's going to represent the forward instruction. Then we're going to have turn right, that's a negative sign, turn left by 90 degrees, that's a positive sign. So those are the steps uh, that we're going to use to draw after. So right now if I start, my sprite goes here and everything's been erased. So that every time we run the script, we get something new. Uh, when we start our script, we're going to want the sprite to face forward in a direction of 90 degrees. So, let's set that from the beginning. So, point in direction, 90 degrees. So that if it turns when we run the sketch again, it's back here, facing the same direction. So, what we're going to need, we're going to need a way to store the sequence of characters, the sequence, the instructions, and then change it every time, according to the rule. So, to store uh, many characters, we're going to use a list. And I'm going to call this instructions, because that's the instruction that we're going to have to follow. And we can see here the list. It's empty. And we can add things. So, for example, I could add thing. And then, uh, so if I click, then I've got thing at position one. If I click again, it's going to add thing one more time. If I wanted to add something else, like for example F, that's going to represent forward, then we can see now F is at position 4. 
So when we start the sketch, we're going to want our list to be empty. So I'm going to erase everything. So we can see now, every time I start, it becomes empty. And then I will add F. Why am I adding F? Because that's our starting point. That's the first iteration. Now what we need to do is to look at each element in our list and replace all the f's with what we have for the rule here. f plus, f minus, etc, etc. So, I'm going to need another variable and that's going to be the position in instructions. So it's which uh, Okay, let me just type this. Position in instructions. And what this variable represents, it represents where we're looking at in our list of instructions. Because when we're going to be on the first iteration, we're going to go to the next one, we're going to need to look at the first character, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, etc. So position in instructions will represent which place we're looking at. And at the beginning, I'm going to set this variable to 1, because we're going to want to look at the first place. So, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to loop through each of the elements in the instructions. So I'm going to use uh, a repeat. And how many times are we going to want to repeat uh, changing the S for the sequence? Well, we're going to check every element in the instruction. So we can use the variable that the length of instructions. Length of instructions is how many elements there are. So right now the length is one because we just have one element. So if the element we're going to be looking at, so if the element is equal to f, and I'm going to use again an uppercase f, and the element that we're looking at is the item, so item at position 1 in this case, but it's going to be always the item at the position in, in the instructions in our list. So when we're going to repeat many times, we're going to start with the first one. Is it the F? Yes, we're going to run this. Then we're going to go to the next one. Is it the F? Yes, we run this, etc. etc. So now if we find a F, we're going to need to replace this f with our list of characters here, given by the rule. So, how are we going to do this? I'm going to do this on the side. We're going to first delete that f. So, we're going to delete the item that's at our position 1. And then we're going to need to add at that position uh, what is the first character we have here? We have an F. So we're going to need to add in our list, where is insert, we're going to insert a F at the position that we are, that is required. Then what we're going to do is we're going to need to insert the plus at the next position. So we're going to, uh, we need to move to the next position. So we're going to change the positions of instruction by one. So we're going to, the position that we're going to consider is going to now be the second one. And instead of inserting a F the second time, we insert a plus. And if we look back, then we're going to need to insert F minus F minus. So I'm going to copy, duplicate this, F then a negative sign, and I'm going to duplicate this again. There are nine uh, elements we need to add in total. Uh, that's not what I wanted to duplicate. Let's try again. Here we go. So we got F plus, F minus, the next one's F minus, F plus, and then we insert one F at the end. So we're going to check with the rule. Here I have f plus, and I have f minus, f minus, f plus, f. What do we have here? f plus, f minus, f minus, f plus, f. So that's correct. So 
Let's just run this. It's not going to do much right now, but we can take a look. If I run it, I get nine elements in my list. And I get F plus, F minus, F plus, uh, F minus, F plus, F. Perfect. That's exactly what we need. So it first inserts a F, and then it's going to look through each of the elements. There are only one. And it's going to replace, every time you find the F, it's going to replace it by this sequence of elements. So then we will need to look at the next uh, position if we, had, if we started with more than one position. So for example, if instead of inserting one F at the beginning, I was to add two Fs at the beginning, I should have 18, because it should do this twice. So let's try it. And if we see here, we now have 18 elements. And he's adding uh, F plus, F minus, F minus, F plus, F twice. Okay. But our starting is just F. So we're going to leave it like this. So that will apply the rule once. Later, we'll do it so that he applies the rules more than once. After that, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to look at all the instructions that we have and make our character move. So the first step, you should move forward because it's a F, then rotate left, turn left, then move forward, turn right, move forward, etc., etc. So again, we're going to use a, a loop, and we're going to repeat the number of times that we have uh, elements in our instructions. So here there are nine steps. And uh, we're going to need to use the same idea. So we need to go back. We're going to need to go back to the first element. So we're going to not change. We're going to set the position to 1. So we're going to start the position is the first element. And OK, this makes quite a long code, but it should be fine. So then if I have an F, I'm going to need to move forward. And else, if I have a plus, I need to turn left. And else, well, it should be a minus, I'm going to turn right. So let's put this in. If it is equals to F, or if it's equals to a plus, OK. And what that we're looking at when the item at position that we are considering. Okay. And we need the same in here. And uh, so if it's an F, we need to go forward. I'm going to put 50 step right now. If it's a plus, we need to turn, let's check the instructions again. If it's a plus, we turn left. Okay, so let's go back. Left is here by 90 degrees. And if it's a negative sign, we turn right by 90 degrees. We're going to repeat this as many times as we have instructions. And every time we're going to need to go to the next element. All right, so Let's see what happens when we press this. Ooh, something happened. Very good. So let's hide. I'm going to hide the list right now so we don't have to look at it. Maybe I'll show it again now. So which pattern do we have? We have the pattern after applying the rule once. If I want to apply the rule twice, so remember it's all of this part here. OK, so. If I want to apply this twice, then I can use a repeat loop. Okay, and we really want to change it to two. Okay, so I'll put this back here and I'll put this back at the bottom. All right, let's start again. Okay, if we apply it twice, we still have the same. Let's apply it three times. Let's see if we get something different now. We are not getting anything different. So why is that? Let's look at our list. How many elements? It only has nine elements. 
So for the length of the instructions, ooh, at the beginning, we're going to need to go back to the first instructions. So we're going to set instructions position to 1. Every time we apply to the rule, after we need to come back and look at the first element. So let's see if we put 2 now here. Ooh, OK, it's going crazy. Yes, now we applied the rule twice, and what we see is we get the pattern that is here. Uh, three times is not going to fit on my screen, so I'm going to reduce this to 10. So to move 10 steps is going to be five times smaller. We can put three. And then we can see, oh, it's got 249 elements. So what it's drawing right now, it's the same as this here. And here has 249. So if you were to find this by hand, it would take a really long time. If we ask it to do four times, okay, I'm going to make the steps smaller, maybe two units. Let's repeat it four times. Let's see. How many steps does it have to do? Let's take a look. 1,249. So one thing we can do in Scratch is we can speed up the drawing a little bit. We can turn on the turbo mode. Bloop, it's drawn it. Okay, that's quite small. Let's make the number of steps a bit bigger. Um, make it three. Well, we can make it even bigger. Um, make it four. Can we make it even a bit bigger? Maybe five. That will fit in the screen. Okay. Um, just a few things to make it pretty. Is every time we do a step, we could change a color. So change pen color by ten. Let's see what happens if we do that. Ooh, we get this rainbow. And I think actually we can change it by a smaller amount if we want, by one. And then it changes color slowly. I think we can even change it slower, 0 0.1. Oh, that's really pretty. Okay, so that's how we can uh, draw L systems.